Welcome back. You're watching Kivumbi 2017, a continuation of our election coverage. Of course, we are uh, covering the reactions uh, to last week's general election where President Huru Kenyatta was declared winner of the presidential race, uh, being re-elected for a second term in office. There have been various reactions. Let's now cross live uh, to Gikomba here in the uh, city of Nairobi, where the Central Organization of Trade Unions, KOTU, are reacting to uh, what has been happening in the last one week. Let's listen in to the KOTU Secretary General, Francis Atwali. Human rights, Jano Adukua Naseman Saidi Awatu Shirin Nane, Ambao Ame Fariki, Kulingana, Na Haya Mambo, Ya Life Bullets. Police wa Jaribu Kuleta Mani, Na Serkali Kwa Ujumla, wa Jaribu Ku Impress Upon Peace. Kama Hatu Kama Bado Tunaskia, Tunangojea, Ninini, Ambaye Takuja Next Pili, Tunataka Kusihi Pia, Wada Ambao ni viongozi wa kisiasa wajaribu kufikiana ya, hata kama wewe ni mshindi ningelia pili kwa president Uhuru Kinyata atafute wale wenzake wengine awaeleze gentlemen hii ilikuwa hii ilikuwa hii haya ndio mambo tulikuwa tumemuuliza bwana wafula chepkati ya kwamba kabla hujatangaza ita all those eight candidates kwa presidential Wacha mambo ya margins, ongea na hawa, kulingana na hii, form hii na hii, na kituo hiki, hii ndiyo total sisi tumepata. Jeaje, unajaabu lingine, muta jieleze, ili to move towards one direction. Hatutaki mwaka nenda, mwaka rudi, uwe ni mwaka wa watu kuogopa, ya kwamba baada ya kura, wa Kenya watawana. Hii naonyesha pichambaya picha ya kiwamkamati eh, picha ya wanawatu picha ya watu wasio wa starabu katika injili ya uhuru our today's press conference was a brief one as i've said in swahili that we are appealing to the kenya government and more so the police to restrain themselves from using life bullets and killing innocent kenyans this one can trigger problem that might uh, uh, perpetuate uh, other people to get involved in such uh, uh, defense to say that we must defend ourselves. It is, uh, it is not fair for us as Kenyans to fear elections that every year when we are having elections, <coughs> we are afraid that we will be able to lose young men uh, during the period of electioneering. We had very peaceful elections, and I want to commend the uh, IEBC in several places that we went because we were part of the observers, uh, a Kenyan observers team. Uh, most of those areas, all of us visited. Uh, people voted well, they were peaceful, they were well organized, and so on. We expected this to end peacefully without losing even a single life. And now those who are inciting Kenyans are no longer politicians, our police, our own force, that we here at court we are fighting for. We have been fighting for the police to have their own union to protect themselves, to be in a position to negotiate for their own terms and conditions of service without somebody deciding on what is good for them. And then they are the same people now trying to incite Kenyans by using life bullets to innocent Kenyans. Police are trained officers. They can handle any situation without necessarily making Kenyans lose their lives. We are appealing to them. We want tomorrow, as on Monday, to be a more peaceful so, can, so that Kenyans can go around doing their own businesses without any harassment of intimidation or fear of anything as Kenyans. And I want to take this opportunity as well to appeal to His Excellency the President, President Uhuru Kenyatta. He must, as a leader now, as a unifying leader, a unifying factor of Kenyans, reach out to other leaders. Have a round table conference with his colleagues and tell them this is how we won elections. We have won, we were declared, we didn't declare ourselves, this is what happened. And now we are past elections, Let's forge ahead, if we can, 
convincingly get into them. I know him very well. He has been very close to the lead of the opposition in Kenya, the doyon of Kenya's uh, uh, opposition politics, Raila Amodo Odinga. At their own level, they should be able to meet and sit and decide as friends, as brothers, because uh, Kenya wants more peace more than ever. We are in a problem of our economy, which has not been performing well, as I know for sure. We need to bring our acts together so that we can be in a position of having an economy that can create employment for our young men and women. And we cannot do so if we are politically fighting. We have a lot of unemployed youths who went to school, well-educated, uh, able to work, and there is nothing for them to do. And this is where our energy uh, should address. So I'm appealing to our leaders to remain sober, to sit down, and see where have we gone wrong. Before, I had also advised the chairman of IEBC, just like I did during the year of 2007, that before any announcement, sit with all eight presidential candidates, convince them that the elections was free, fair, and credible. And then be able to explain to them, because technologically some of us, we are not in a position to, to apprehend what happened immediately after the elections. To us, we were waiting for the announcement from the IEBC. That is final, according to us. So if there are any other mistakes also, the technical guys should be able to come up and pinpoint out to Kenyans that this is what happened. Technologically, this is what happened. This, is, this was fair on both sides, either from the side of Jubilee, the side of NASA, so that we don't be in a position of uncertainty. We don't want to live in unclear circumstances without knowing what exactly what happened. Reactions from the Central Organization of Trade Unions there, speech by uh, the Kotu Secretary General Francis Atoli from the Kotu headquarters, urging Kenyans uh, to remain peaceful, urging the police not to use excessive force, urging the President Ruganyata to reach out uh, to, uh, to, to the other political leaders, especially from the National Super Alliance, uh, to make sure that they heal this country. Dismas, what is your take on those, uh, on Atoli's words, very quickly? Well, in my view, Atoli has uh, made uh, very important statements that uh, if our leaders and our politicians uh, pay attention to, we would be having a very good country. The, the first one in my, understand, my understanding of what he has said, and uh, just to betray the idea that IBC conducted an election which is supposed to be free, fair, and credible, and they will declare uh, a winner. One of the things he said that uh, everybody must pay attention to is that IBC should have taken the opportunity to convince all the presidential candidates that, in fact, the election was free, fair, and credible, so that by the time they are declaring the winner, there is no candidate who is uh, casting aspersions on the integrity of the entire process. If that had been the case, then all the presidential candidates who lost would have actually made their concession speeches and would not be having these nasty situations. The second thing that uh, needs uh, attention as well is uh, that the issues raised by NASA around um, hacking of the systems, around having um, ungazetted uh, polling stations, and that they've raised so many issues, one can easily lose count. But it would be important for IBC to address those issues one by one, and if they do not make sense, dismiss them. So that Kenyans are very clear that the person who has been declared the winner, in fact, has won in a free, fair, and credible election. Because as it is today, all the six million people who voted for Ray Lodinga are not convinced that this election was free, fair, and credible. And when you wake up in the morning to go and cast your ballot, you want to be sure that, in fact, your vote counts. One of the issues that is bringing this contention is around uh, the hacking. And uh, I, I don't understand why IBC is reluctant to allow for an independent uh, forensic uh, audit or investigation of the NASA claims. In my view, and uh, I mean, if, if you've lost a, a relative in a manner that is a bit uh, suspicious, when, uh, the, when the post-mortem is taking place, the affected parties are invited to bring in their pathologist to witness the entire process and form a view. One fails to understand why IBC cannot invite uh, 
the NASA agents, right. Jubilee agents, and an independent pathologist. Now, in this case, maybe a forensic ICT auditor, so that the all the all the interested parties are seated in a room mm -hmm. with an independent person and look at these servers that, are, that NASA is talking about, maybe from the 7th, 8th, and 9th. Right. So that if uh, NASA is making allegations which are frivolous, then everybody in Kenya can look at Mr. Ray Lodinga in the eye and say, Mr. Ray Lodinga, you lost this election in a free, fair, and credible manner. Please give your concession speech. But in the absence of that, the people right now are telling Mr. Ray Lodinga to give a concession speech. As far as Rela is concerned, is not sure whether he won, is not sure whether he lost. Now, if you go to the recent election we had in the US where Trump won, uh, Clinton came in and gave a concession speech because she knew for a fact she had lost. So she, she didn't have any problem giving a concession speech. So today, expecting Mr. Ray Lodinga to give a concession speech and, uh, you know, say, it's been uh, nice doing business. Let me go back to the village. Well, at the back of his mind, his agents and his supporters think some monkey business took place at uh, IBC. The only way to clear that mist, All as right. uh, Atul right. has pointed out, mm -hmm. is to have a, a forensic audit so that every Kenyan is settled once and for all. Mutinda, what is your take? And of course, on my, what at all my, 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 my take is that we are throwing so much flack at IBC, and yet their mandate is very clear. They, 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 they don't do cancelling, you know. And uh, no, I understand the loss. I understand the impact of losing, but it is wrong to make it look like it is the work of IBC to cancel losing. I lost in an election. TNA ne Jubilee never called me to cancel me. It, is, it was me to deal with my loss when Sakaja won the nomination. So it is wrong to start making it look like one of the functions of IBC is to cancel. And I want to say this because I think whatever Atwali is saying, uh, with all due respect, the IBC did. If you remember very well, before then, the, the NASA team walked out. They had, had a meeting with IBC for more than two hours where their issues were being addressed. But again, you do not address issues to a point that you do not fulfill your mandate. IBC has a mandate, and a very sensitive one, and actually that should be fulfilled within a certain time frame. So because as we look at all these things, we also need to look at the culture of not accepting defeat by our politicians. All because right. the, question we, the, the question we need to ask ourselves is, supposing... <clears throat> the NASA leadership had made a concession speech, would we be having the issues that we are having about the issue of auditing? As uh, up, up to now, mm -hmm. I, I happened, by the way, to have been one of the agents in one of the constituencies. I, I, I even have my hard copy of the 34B, and I believe that 290 copies are in the hands of very many other people under the 34 A's because this form 34 A's were being uh, every agent was being given a copy. The 34 B's every agent was being given a copy and the 34 C's. I'm yet to see a single case where NASA is demonstrating that whatever their agents gave them as the result on the ground is not what is reflected at the national tally. That would be a good starting point to justify whatever audit they are demanding. Just a single case. But I think you should have noted that they've said they won't go to court. And you need to know why. Because in court, it is not about ERC. It is not about propaganda. Right. It is about evidence. And when you see someone opting not to go to court, it is clear that what matters in court is evidence, and they probably don't have any. So we need to look at mm -hmm. the culture of accepting defeat, because democracy is about the people's will. It is not even about margins. Actually, our constitution says that you only need to have 50% plus one. That even that slim margin of one, is enough Doesn't for a matter. result to be declared. All right, all right. We'll get more into that. I want us to take a look at uh, the numbers and what happened, what went wrong for NASA. But before we do that, let's uh, listen in to the independent electoral. And, uh, that moment when the IBC announced that President Uhuru Kenyatta had won the election with 8,203,290 votes uh, against uh, the second placed uh, Raila Odinga, who had uh, 6 million. 762,224 votes. That is 44%, 44.74% of the vote uh, with Uhuru Kenyatta, I, according to IBC, having 54.2% of the vote. Let's listen to, to President Uhuru Kenyatta uh, speaking shortly after being given that certificate at the Bomas of Kenya. I extend a hand of friendship to our older brother, Raila Molo Odinga, all his 
supporters, and also congratulate all those who won various positions on the NASA tickets. This is a competition like any other. Competitions do not result in enmity. We need and must continue to work together for the welfare of our people and in order to keep this country united and together. Mine is to say that we reach out to you. We reach out to your supporters and say that in any competition, there will always be winners and losers. But I believe in a true democracy that Kenya is, all Kenyans are winners. Right. The National Super Alliance, on the other hand, of course, did walk out of uh, that uh, National Talent Center saying that the IBC had not listened to them. Of course, as has been reported very widely, they did uh, not uh, recognize the numbers uh, given by the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission. Uh, and as it stands, their way forward is still not clear. Let's listen to them. All is there for the people to see. Yes. And uh, there are occasions when you have gone to court, even it's something as clear as daylight, as you point out, uh, and uh, uh, the, 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 the proceedings have been frustrated. So we are not going to go for that invitation to go <coughs> through a judicial process. We are going to the court of public opinion. And the objective is to restore the sovereignty of the people of Kenya because all authority is delegated by the people of Kenya and must be exercised through constitutional means. And our view is that a stolen election, a stolen election does not amount to establishment of government as provided in Article 3 of the Constitution. So I want us to talk about the numbers, uh, given what we have seen over the last one week when Kenyans went to the polls on Tuesday. And although NASA have disputed the poll outcome, let's talk about what really happened, where the election was won, uh, from what we know. Some political pundits have said that NASA shot themselves on the foot. What happened? Because they, had, uh, they have been talking about... Uh, Jubilee were fighting for re-election. NASA were campaigning with a lineup, a very rich lineup of some of the most seasoned politicians in this country. The rallying call was 10 million strong. The numbers that came out from the IBC uh, reflected only uh, slightly more than half of that 10 million. So, gentlemen, what happened? Where was the election won? Let's start from there. Uh, Hesbon, from where you sit, what can you, what is your post-mortem of this? Uh, from what I see it, I want to believe that uh, the election was uh, won uh, at the point where strategy now met the demands of, of, of the people of Kenya. And uh, to this end, you want to imagine that uh, looking at what Jubilee did, their strategy was first to retain their strongholds. And from the outcome that we have from IBC, it is clear that they managed to do that, that the areas that they were strong in in 2013, they managed to demonstrate that they are still strong. And then uh, the second bit of their strategy was to get a big chunk of votes from uh, you know, NASA strongholds, the, the areas that NASA won big in the 2013 general elections. So from the numbers that we got from IBC, it is uh, a little bit clear that this strategy worked. And uh, if that is what Jubilee was working on from the beginning, you can actually say that their strategy worked. You, you look at uh, counties like Kisi, Nyamira, uh, you know, uh, Bungoma, for instance, they, they were trying to get a big chunk of the votes uh, by endearing themselves to the people, uh, letting the people understand, you know, what they've done as a government and what they will do going forward. And uh, to a large extent, I want to believe that it worked, especially in, in, in the Kisi region, where, you know, in Yamira, for instance, Jubilee at the presidential level trounced uh, NASA slightly. In Kisi, I think the margin was out of this world. I mean, uh, Jubilee got 40. Uh, I, 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 I don't think they even imagined that they would get 40% plus. I think the estimation was around 20, 30. And you look at the strategy, you know, the last few weeks to the election, 
I think they made a serious camp in Kisi town. And uh, I, I remember this walk by many people in Kisi. <coughs> so to the extent that Jubilee uh, went out of its way to look for votes from perceived, you know, NASA strongholds right. and succeeded, you can actually say that they won on strategy. But on the other hand, you also have to give NASA credit because, uh, you know, from their campaign, you could actually see that a lot of their messages resonated with the common Mwanainchi on the ground, messages of change, messages of devolution. Uh, it is sad that in certain areas, uh, the, 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 the results did not turn out as they expected. You look at counties like Bomet, I think it is a shocker to most uh, NASA supporters. You look at uh, Narok and Kajiado County, you realize that these are counties that, that NASA thought that they'd really made serious, serious, serious uh, inroads in terms of, you know, taking their percentages high. But uh, to a large extent, nothing really changed. If anything, uh, with the numbers of, of uh, with the increased number of voters, right. you don't want to say that Jubilee actually benefited. Just uh, to, to, to highlight some, some of those uh, counties which were perceived to be uh, the foundation stones of, of NASA, uh, and, uh, and what happened there. For example, you talked about Kisi. Has born Ki in Kisi in 2013, Raila Odinga got uh, 236,000 votes. In 2017, he got uh, less than that, 224,000. Uhuru Kenyatta got 95,000 in 2013. He got 175,000. In 2017, Nyamira, uh, the shock, as you said, 121,000 for Raila Odinga in 2013, 95,000 in 2017 for, for Uru Kenyatta 54,000 in 2013 and 106 uh, more than uh, double what NASA presidential candidate got. Quite the same thing uh, with uh, Raila Odinga getting 138, uh, Uru Kenyatta getting 43,000 up from 17,000 he got in 2013. That has been the trend in the counties of Narok, Kajiado, Bungoma, Kakamega. Prof, where was this selection lost by NASA? Um. The first point to which the election was lost is uh, in the messaging. NASA depended too much on the message and not on the translation of that message on the ground into votes. They assumed that if a speech had been made on, the, on, a, on a platform and the people had uh, responded positively, that was it. Now, secondly, there was this... Um, Intra uh, internal conflict in NASA between the different affiliates, you know, on the ground, whereby there was no unanimous agreement that we are going in this direction. <clears throat> now, those are the groups that Jubilee targeted. I'll give you an example. If you look at uh, what was happening in Kisi, for example, um, a lot of it had to do with. Uh, the nomination process. Uh, Governor Nguai literally controlled the, the nomination process to the extent that uh, he created dissent on the ground from the perspective of the presidential curas. Say if you go to Nyamira, the reason is different. In Nyamira, the chief jubilee campaigner was essentially Matiang. He was holding meetings, he was summoning chiefs, he was having meetings with religious leaders, and the effort he made penetrated the areas that were previously impenetrable. Now, it is of course, we don't need to tell anybody that it, he shouldn't have done it. That's an, it's now an old song. The, 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 <laughs> the, the, it's an old song, but it's, con you see, in, in our system, you refer to the constitution and its requirements, only when, it, if, if interpreted the way you want, then it makes sense. In this particular case, uh, that is the second point. The other thing I want to say about the election, you need to understand that uh, Jubilee literally had a monopoly of mobilization, control, all right, and distribution. Um, in Kisi, a chief who has been given a motorbike would not open his mouth in favor of NASA. <laughs> Otherwise, he would be out in the cold next day. What you're talking about is use of state resources. Of or? course, I'm talking right. around it. <laughs> now, finally, there is also the, the interesting thing that when you look at um, the implementation of the campaign, 
In the last two weeks, and this is factual of the campaign, Jubilee literally loaded gunias and gunias of, 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 of money to the electorate. And there are uh, clips that we have that... Are you saying, are you talking about spending? Voter bribery, voter, voter bribery. It was abundant. You can, you can substantiate this. This can be substantiated, you can. yes. Right. Dismas. <laughs> um, uh, NASA held very big political rallies. Uh, you would say bigger than the Jubilee political rallies. What were, where was the disconnect between the message in the rallies and that connection with Wanjiko? Well, there, there are several things which come uh, at play. In my view, number one is that uh, NASA was running on an empty gas. There was uh, no fuel in their car. They had a huge cash flow crisis. So that uh, even as the professor is suggesting that uh, after they go to a place and uh, they've got a big rally, they do their messaging, they did not have uh, sufficient resources to maintain an infrastructure which would remain proactive on the ground. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you look at the last uh, two weeks to the election, you wouldn't see a reloading um, advert on uh, national TV, but for, but for Jubilee, they were running at the top of every hour. So there were so many. I mean, Kenyans were bombarded by Jubilee adverts. That's what was number one. And then number two, <coughs> obviously, is the case of uh, using uh, state resources for this campaign. And you know, we've spoken about this time, times above number, about uh, Chapter 6 and the Leadership and Integrity Act, Section 23, which ideally say that our cabinet secretaries and county ministers are not supposed to engage in uh, politics. But uh, all public servants, especially uh, political appointees, were deployed to go and engage in very serious campaigns. To the extent that uh, President Kenyatta got annoyed when uh, he, he said that he found uh, the, the public servants in Amakweni campaigning for, for NASA. And then, of course, when you're talking about uh, state resources in a third world, you cannot ignore it. Because, for instance, when uh, President Kenyatta is going, say, to Makweni for a campaign, it's uh, the state which is supposed to arrange for his, uh, for, for his logistics A to Z. Mm -hmm. But if it's uh, Kalonzo Msioko is going to Makweni to do the same campaign, somebody has to foot the bill. So uh, the, the, the benefits of incumbency were in favor of Jubilee. But... Uh, most, uh, most important are the promises which were being made by Jubilee. Because they are in government, it's very easy for President Kenyatta to say that I'm going to do a road. And I so I'm taking you back in terms of funding the campaigns. Whose fault is it that NASA's campaign was underfunded? Well, you know, all over the world, especially in, in Africa, it's very easy for an incumbent to make one or two phone calls and uh, get uh, donors forming a long queue to give you resources, unlike for the opposition. Because you see, the oppositions will be making promises that uh, when we win, we'll consider doing business with you. But when you're in government, you're telling them we're in government, so you right. better do business with us uh, now. Mm -hmm. That's number one. And then number two, you do not even, when you're in uh, an incumbent, you don't even need a lot of resources. A good example is, if President Kenyatta wants to go to Kisi for campaigns, he does not need anybody to pay for his chopper. He does not need anybody to pay for his accommodation. The state will do that because he's going to Kisi not only as a Jubilee presidential candidate, but he's going to Kisi as a head of state, as a right. symbol of national unity. Mm -hmm. So for him, he's got an entire public infrastructure to arrange for his meetings. If he wants to go to coast, if, for instance, if Rela wants to go and uh, campaign uh, in Mombasa, he has to liaise with Governor Joe to get uh, young men to offer security, to do logistics. But for President Kenyatta, all he needs to do is to tell his, uh, the, the public servant Sunday that I want to go to Mombasa, and uh, they'll sort out the rest. So m maybe moving uh, forward, we need to ask <coughs> ourselves, is running against an incumbent likely to produce a free and fair election? Even if nobody compromises the numbers, you, we need, that's the question maybe we need to ask her in future. Mm -hmm. Because if you're just going into the race as a, a normal Kenyan, say like uh, Dida or uh, Joe Nyaga competing against uh, President Kenyatta, what are those uh, advantages inherent in uh, being an incumbent? And the last question, two weeks before the election, and now I'm speaking about uh, the Kisi nation, that's uh, Kisi and Yamira, it would be interesting if you get a clever political scientist to actually tell us the cost per vote for Jubilee and the cost per vote for NASA. Because the kind of resources deployed uh, in Kisi, I mean, the cash flow there was so exciting. People were very happy. People would, they, other people stopped going to their chambers to take care of their cows and, uh, because now there, were, there was uh, resources around. All right. and, and maybe all over the nation, not only Kisi, but it would be very interesting for Professor Tumbo's colleagues at the University of Nairobi to dedicate time and tell us, now that uh, Jubilee has been uh, declared the winner of the presidential race, Mutinda. what was the yes. cost per vote? What is your take on this? And of course, uh, 
this month is raising an issue of uh, how hard it is to defeat an incumbent. Is, shouldn't the opposition be prepared, knowing that an incumbency has is, is, is has advantages? I, I know very many incumbent governors that lost, and they had the same advantage. So I am not uh, very much in line with that kind of thinking. And we've seen income in Ghana, and it is in Africa, Black Africa for that matter, an incumbent lost. So incumbents can lose, even with all that he's saying. Nigeria and uh, well. it is best, even in Nigeria, it is best demonstrated by the number of governors, incumbent governors, who have the same advantages, like he's saying at the national level, but they all lost. According to me, NASA lost because of majorly two issues. First is what uh, Prof has said, that they allowed intra-competition. That WIPA was competing against Ford Kenya, it was competing against ODM. And number two, their nominations were more of a sham as compared to any other political party. The people who mobilize and who do political campaigning are the political players. These two things demotivated them. The, first fact, the fact that they have to get so tired competing amongst themselves as NASA to get whatever they wanted, and the fact that there was blatant abuse of the nomination process in most of their parties. The results have confirmed that. You saw Kitui, we were told Waipa Mosilla was beaten by Malombe. When we came to the next actual election, you saw the figures. And the, this can be repeated all over. So those things really demotivated the key people. And so they went to campaign half-heartedly. So that they, they, some of them are campaigning and, feeling, and they are feeling like their leaders should also have a test of their own medicine. We are all this human. I want to say something to... before right. I finish. Mm -hmm. Why did Jubilee win? Because now I'm talking about why NASA <laughs> lost. Why did Jubilee win? Jubilee, first and foremost, managed. you remember the other time, the margin was very close, 50.00z. Mm -hmm. that it, we actually avoided a runoff in 2013 by only 8,000 votes. That above 50% is Excellency the President at 8,000 votes that made us avoid a runoff in 2013. So they deliberately and consciously devised a strategy to get votes from NASA strongholds. And how did they do this? They listened to the local issues and made attempts to address them. That is why when they go to Western. Whether that was satisfactory or not is a debate for another day. But the vote they got clearly shows that the efforts paid off. They went to Western. They <coughs> used to talk about paper mills. They even actually made attempts to revive it. They used to talk about mumias. When they go to Kisi, one of the most pertinent issues there was the issue of IDPs. And they at last had to listen to the intelligence that, you know, there is nothing much, and you're not going to make inroads into Kisi. If this one issue of lack of compensation of the Kisi IDPs, which was quite substantial... After saying that previously that, that the IDPs were, had all been uh, resettled... That's why I'm saying, yes, they were resettled, but not compensated. You know, resettling and compensation are different. If you look at the program of IDPs, there are some actually who were bought land, right. and there are some who were given cash. So that was a quite a very sensitive issue in Kisiland. Right. And at the very final days, Jubilee made sure that it had, had addressed it. Whether satisfactory or not, we don't know. But a, it, it is clear from the result that a good number of the Kisi community felt like, okay, better late than, than never. And they responded according to, to votes. Right. If you look at the results, if you look at and, and assumptions, you know the assumptions that Asso Nas have made, eh, that the tribal kingpins that they put together, the Pentagon, would bring the yeah, yeah we'll, come, we'll come to that. We'll come to that. This must have been yeah, yeah. Just, to say something. Yeah, we'll come yeah, to just two issues from what I have ever said, and uh, he deserves a pat on the back for being honest. He said that uh, Jubilee listened to intelligence reports. Now, these intelligence reports, I assume, produced by the National Intelligence Service, I doubt whether they are available to the competition, whether Nyaga received a, that copy, a Kura Ukots, or indeed a Rai Lodinga. But this is an assumption, this yeah. No, no, but, but that's what he said, anyway, that they received the intelligence them reports. Yeah. They received you know? intelligence reports. Intelligence reports in general. No one has a duty to share yeah. intelligence with yeah. yeah. competitors. Yeah, so, so maybe that, that question is about right. uh, or not the competition receiving the intelligence reports from a state or agency is a question which is up in the air. But again, another issue which he has raised, probably that uh, we need to prosecute further, is about the coalition partners within NASA. If there was competition between the 
the political parties that form NASA, then it works uh, for the benefit of the presidential candidates. Like, for instance, if you have... Um, Maybe in Kakamega you have a Boni Kalwale running and Oparanya running. Each will mobilize his voters separately, but at the end of the day, when they get to the polling station, one would assume that they would vote for the presidency. That's and that's the reason why why they don't have a majority in the National Assembly and the Senate. Because you would find in one seat, like for instance, one that I'm conversant with in uh, Langata, there was uh, Nixon Korir from uh, Jubilee. And then uh, NASA Oscar and Moke, Moke, yeah, and Oscar Moke from ODM, there was Sijeni from uh, Waipa, there were so many. And you see, Korir won by a, a small margin, about a, about a thousand votes. One can easily make an assumption that if uh, NASA would have one candidate, maybe a Moke or uh, a, any other person, it would have been very easy to engage in a solid fight with uh, Korir. So those are things that uh, you, you cannot wish away. All right. Hezbun, is it, is it okay to say that... Uh, when we have, when, when NASA have those competing, the sibling rivalry, so to speak, that uh, the presidential uh, vote doesn't suffer. Uh, well, it is. I mean, the, the truth of the matter is, when they have those sibling rivalries, it affects to a small extent the presidential vote. And we've seen this in counties like Kitui, you know, where it is clear that uh, the reason why Malombo was given the ticket was was basically nothing to do with his popularity on the ground. He was even beaten by Musila, who apparently was denied the ticket. And you can tell that to a large extent, there are people who voted for Musila and extended that vote to President Uru Kenyatta. Exactly. That is clear. But then, if, if you look at it in terms of these other positions, like the members of parliament and, 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 uh, and governors, where the, the process was free and fair, it actually worked for the NASA presidential candidate, but worked against the siblings who are rivals. You know, uh, in the last general election, I think uh, Jubilee suffered. J Jubilee and URP suffered because they had two candidates, yeah. and and they they in Langata, and and, and uh, ODM won. Now, in, they didn't even learn from what Jubilee went through. You know, they did the same same mistake, and Korea has won. Welcome to Parliament, Korea. But then I think the most important thing that this must raise is that how do you deal with an incumbent plus all the trappings of power that they have? I mean, it is not the problem of the incumbent that he has the trappings of power and therefore he can't pay for intelligence. Intelligence is actually part of what, what, what he needs every day to run the country. But then the opposition suffers that. But I think the most fundamental thing that we may want to address, we've seen incumbents lose. Abdullah Wade lost in Senegal. In Gambia, we had uh, yeah, Jame, yeah, we've yeah. had, uh, you know, uh, John luck. Mahama, good luck. I mean, they lose all over. But I think that the voter in Kenya is a little bit peculiar in the sense that the voter is conditioned, you know, to expect and take handouts and vote according to the handouts. And, you know, I think uh, to, to, to some extent, you actually saw that happen in so many areas where a lot of money was spent to get these voters to believe that, you know what, because we are giving you resources before the election, there is a sense in which you need to vote for us. And they actually went and voted for that. And, and that is where we should focus on. There is no way you're going to deal with an incumbent. You cannot deny an incumbent intelli intelligence report because there is an election. But how, many, cannot... how much do you need to spend to buy 8 million votes? I think the much you need to spend is not a problem uh, because you go to different regions and the expectation. Because I remember I went to Kisi and I think the expectation that they had of NASA and the expectation they had of Jubilee were totally different. So the extent to which they would go with Jubilee depended on how much Jubilee was using in facilitation. And I think they also have this idea that the opposition is not rich and therefore the little that the opposition gives, they are actually okay with it. All right. Prof. I, I wanted to um, go back to what um, my colleague uh, Kabema said about governors lost. Mm -hmm. My understanding of the dynamics of the gubernatorial race is completely different from the presidential race. The gubernatorial race is determined largely by local dynamics. In other words, for example, if you take Nyamira, all right, Nyagarama will mobilize certain specific clans that will support him with or without money. Those he'll put in the pocket based on historical factors. Then he'll move to the ones that will not support, support him, and that's where they, they, he'll pay. Now, if you, if you go to, for example, Kisumu, now the factors that play... The, 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 the seat was initially 
you know, in Kano. Now, the Kano clans are, are, are deemed to have a headache. Oh. Now, the ones of Seme and the, the people around them are, are looking at that it's our turn now. We have numbers. Last time, we played with them because of the appeal by the, our seniors. But now, we are going to play the traditional numbers. Uh, you will go on and on. And the, my, the contention is that in the gubernatorial uh, race, things like money come in after the local anthropological factors have had their say. Now, with regard to this issue of the, uh, the incumbent, now, you know, incumbency in different parts of the world has uh, some general attributes and specific attributes. Now, if you take Nigeria, for example, uh, Jonathan, all right, the traditional uh, ethnic numbers were taken into, ground, into, into account. But at the same time, the issue of performance, he never looked like he had really managed to do anything mm -hmm. uh, that would, that would uh, not undermine uh, his uh, standing among the citizens. What I'm trying to say here is that there are, it's very difficult to make generalized statements about what effect incumbency can do. All right. Only one thing is clear, All right. that the incumbency starts in a poor position. Let's talk about, of course, we are talking about why Jubilee won and why NASA lost. Let's talk about uh, what every member of each side, uh, you know, uh, uh, like the NASA had their, their, their Pentagon, what they brought to the table. Um, how, 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 how did that how much did that play a part? For example, the NASA side. I mean, we had uh, Ruto, who Disma said uh, before the elections that even if he brings around 100, 200,000 votes to the NASA side, that's a big win. We did see him losing even his uh, gubernatorial seat. Uh, the likes of Wotangula and Mudavad, you are said to be very important for that NASA side because of the voter, uh, the Western Kenya vote. We have seen, uh, of course, we can't get so much into the presidential tally details, but in terms of uh, the seats that Jubilee has won in those uh, in the Western Kenya region, we've seen four uh, parliamentary seats in Western. That about a third of the parliamentary seats. There's Navaholo. There's uh, I think there's Lug. Uh, there's uh, yes. there's uh, there's uh, there's uh, Malava in 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 in, 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 in Bungoma. There's Kimilili, Mantelgon, Sirisia, Obuya West. All those four of them. That's almost 50 percent of the seats in Bungoma County. We, also for Kalonzo's part uh, in Wukambani, we have seen there's uh, two Jubilee seats in Kitui, one in Machakos. Uh, I think uh, there's one in Makueni as well. What does this say about what, how much this NASA principles, the Pentagon, performed? And how much did, uh, for example, Ruto, William Ruto, Deputy President, how did he perform in terms of getting his base, so to speak, to come and vote Uhuru Kenyatta. Let me start with you this one. Well, if, uh, if you go by the results that they, they declared, yes. the biggest uh, loser, in my view, is uh, Kalonzo of Sioka. Because if uh, NASA doesn't go to the Supreme Court or if they don't have any strategy that are, they can go to the Supreme Court and um, argue their case, then uh, it's very easy for him to become a chapter in history books. The, that's the sad reality. His supporters would be bleeding, but that's the sad reality. Because you have Charity Ngilu, who is going to be very strong in uh, Kitui, but maybe what Kalonzo can do is to play around with uh, the county assemblies to keep Charity Ngilu at check. But when it comes to Machakos, I suspect Governor Mtua now, having secured the Machakos seat, is going to up his antenna and look at the presidential election for 2022. And when you talk about those benefits of incumbents, it's very easy His for... His party has two MPs only. Yeah, yeah. So, so for him, he stands at a, a pole position. Right. Of course, there is a Kivuza Kibwana whose uh, partnership with Kalonzo was uh, merely meant to reduce competition in, uh, in Makweni. So in, in my view, when it comes to the other elected uh, seats, Kalonzo has uh, performed uh, poorly. But you know, for the presidential votes, he was able to get a good number of uh, votes going for, for, his, uh, for Raila Odinga, which is uh, very solid. When you go to Western Kenya, even without uh, breaking those seats, I mean, uh, when you look at um, Wetangula, he was able to secure two counties. He was able to secure Bungoma and uh, Transoya. These are debates as to whether or not Transoya is in uh, Western or it's in uh, Rift Valley. But his uh, biggest success, in my view, was uh, to make sure that uh, the Jubilee 
uh, kingpin in Western Kenya got a, a beating. That was uh, Ken Lusaka. So for him, while his other colleagues are bleeding, he seems to be a very happy man. And also the fact that he decided to run for Senate and is going to be in the Senate while his other colleagues are going to be in the political call gives him a, a poll position. But cumulatively, the biggest beneficiary, in my view, is going to be Musalia Mdavadi because he has come out really to give uh, a lot of support to Raila Odinga at this time when uh, there's a crisis. Mm -hmm. He's the one who is raising uh, these issues. And in my view, as he manages those expectations, it's very easy for him to now consolidate the entire Western Kenya vote as he, he probably looks at the 2022 election. And also for the first time, his political party seems to have a, a, a number of members of uh, parliament, national assembly, and a number of those county assemblies. But at the, at the bottom line, uh, when you look at Governor Isaac Ruto, you, you need to give him a, a pat on the back alongside um, Tua for different reasons. Because now Kenya needs men like uh, Governor Isaac Ruto, like uh, Governor Munya, like Hassan Omar, that when you've got ideas that you want to stand for, you want to fight for, you pursue them to the natural end, even if it's going to cost you your political seats. Those are the kind of people we need in this nation. Because majority of the guys we have in the National Assembly Senate, most of the guys who've won uh, the gubernatorial positions, they won not because they have got capacity or intellectual infrastructure or resources, but simply they were because they were in the right political party. What's your parties. take on the deputy president's performance? The deputy president has done, the deputy president has done very well, apart from uh, his own base, where his uh, MP was not able to get a, a jubilee person elected as his MP in uh, Tarbo, and also is a preferred candidate, although jubilee denies it. Buzek did not able, was not able to get the seat. But right now he's in a very firm position to use professors words in a very poll position to start putting his uh, system for 2022, you realize he managed almost single-handedly the Jubilee primaries after the first round was a successful failure. And a number of uh, guys who've won uh, on uh, this uh, Jubilee ticket is actually part of his infrastructure for 2022. So for him, he stands at a very poor position. If there's anybody in, uh, who wants to run against uh, Ruto in 2022, you know now we're having this conversation, Ceteris Paribas, right. that uh, is going to run in 22. is going to be a lethal candidate that uh, you're going to face. Because outside of being uh, an incumbent, because as soon as uh, they're sworn into office, maybe the first, after the first one or two years, President Kenyatta is going to be a lame duck president, and the person really will be running the show is going to be Ruto. So if you're planning to run against Ruto in 2022, you must go to your private chambers, sit down, and do very serious calculus on how you are going to manage him. Mutinda, how did the principals manage from both sides? Yeah, the winners first is uh, His Excellency the President Uhuru Kenyatta. He has gotten a much uh, clear mandate than in 2013. You know, uh, 2013, like I said, was 50.00 something. 8, now it is 54 no, percent. So at least uh, as he goes towards retirement, he's, he's, he's satisfied to have won the confidence of much more Kenyans in his second term than he did in his first term. Number were two were there the fears of him being a first term, a one term president <laughs> at Pardon? some point? Were there any fears of him being a one term president? Uh, from us, Jubilee, that was not there. Of course, the NASA people tried to propagate that so that to make it believable among their supporters that they can actually beat an incumbent. But as in Jubilee, we were clear that he was going to go for a second term and he has actually gotten a much clearer mandate than was the case before. So that makes him a winner. I also want to say that uh, IBC is also a winner because uh, as up, up to now, there is nobody who's questioned in a credible manner the electoral process and the results. And that is why instead of going to a court of law, they want to take it to a court of public opinion. Of course, for obvious reasons, it's easy to confuse the court of public opinion. It's not easy to do that in a court of law because there it is just about facts and evidence. But in a court of public opinion, it's about so many other things right. that really can't be established. So another winner, the deputy president, he managed to secure his base. And he has casualties, like uh, the major one, of course, being Isaac. Isaac Ruto. I, I think it, it, we've said here enough times that uh, we didn't believe that Isaac Ruto was going to change the presidential vote, but we had hoped he was going to secure his governorship. But he lost both, and uh, with quite convincing margins. So he, the deputy president, like uh, my fellow panelists here correctly puts it, is going to face 2022 with a lot of confidence. Now, the other person who I think is a winner is Mudavadi. Mudavadi was not on the ballot, but somehow his ANC has quite made inroads. It has gotten some Senate seats. It has gotten, I think, 12... 
members of parliament within the Western Bloc, which he didn't have earlier. And I, I think that, uh, and, and, and there are also people who now can feel indebted to him now that he never asked for anything and he supported them as we go towards 2022. So who are the losers? One of them is, I agree, Kalonzo Musioka. You know, Kalonzo Musioka did some things towards this election that were meant at consolidated his, consolidating his power base in Waipa. One of them is how he dealt with Musila and Mudama. It is good to know that these are the founder members. And uh, other than the late Mutula Kilonzo, the only other two people who could challenge Kalonzo in how Waipa is run is Musila and Mudama. So I think for some reasons, political experience, he decided to deal with them once and for all. But unfortunately, from where I see it, it backfired badly on him. Because in the last election, he had four governors. He had <coughs> Kitui, he had Machakos, he had Garissa, and Tana he River. had uh, Tana River. As we speak, he lost Tana River, he lost Kitui, he lost Machakos, and Makueni, Makueni now, and he also lost Garissa. Makueni now is an, an adopted son, who's <laughs> Professor Kivuza Kibwana. Yes, he's an adopted Waipa son because his party is Mungano, and it is what he used in the last election. He also adopted the CCU leader, party leader, Wavinya, and it backfired. He favored Malombe, and it backfired. So now Ngilu is the is the governor. If you look at the, count, the, uh, the, the three counties in terms of MPs, right. in Makueni, he had five MPs and one independent. As we speak now, there are two who are not from his area, the independent and one who won on a, uh, the, what do you call, demo, new Democrats, the, the one from Boni. Mm. If you go to Machakos, in Machakos at least we have to give him, he, he gained one MP. Mm -hmm. Because uh, in the last election out of eight, he only had three. Now he right. has four. Mm -hmm. And four have gone elsewhere. In Kitui, he had seven. Now he has five. So it, generally speaking, he is at a loss. He there wanted are, to consolidate those, his power both. There are those who say that uh, this is probably Raila Odinga's last stab and Kalonzo will be the one who takes over from whichever form that... That, that is really not guaranteed. Eh? Right. Because for obvious reasons, there is also Mudavadi who is very much interested. And their political clout is almost at par. They've all gone up to the deputy presidency. So that, that will be, time will tell who right. exactly will inherit mm -hmm. the NASA vote. And that <laughs> is if Raila, you know, in 2013, I, I, it's good to remind you, they had an MOU that Raila will go for one term, but if he wins. So that still holds in this other one. But, that he was not right. going to be on the ballot in 2022. I want to take a quick commercial break. Just hold that issue. thought. <laughs> Don't let this issue cool down whatsoever. <laughs> uh, we'll take a quick commercial break here on uh, this uh, continuation of Kivumbi 2017. When we return, we continue with this issue, taking a look at where did Jubilee win? Where did NASA lose the vote? Don't go too far.